Welcome to the Virginia Association for Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to sign up for more. The presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. And first up is Eastern Mennonite University. Hey everybody, my name is Serene Mendoza. I am a senior admissions counselor here at EMU. And today I will be giving you a brief presentation about EMU, so let's get started. So this is our beautiful campus located in Harrisonburg, Virginia. We are within a two hour drive from Washington DC and Richmond and a 45 minute drive from Charlottesville. We have plenty of outdoor beauty surrounding our campus, such as national forests and national parks, as well as um, Shenandoah River and Massanutten Resort, which our students have access to. Overall, we're around 1,000 undergraduate students enrolled at EMU, and you can see our average scores on the upper left-hand corner. Our average GPA for incoming seniors is 3.6, but just know this is an average, and we are test blind as of 2020. Um, but you can see that in previous years, our SAT and ACT scores are listed. Overall, we're excited to announce a brand new lab facilities, including anatomy and physiology, where we have human cadavers for our undergraduate student body studying biomedicine and pre-med. We also have um, high-tech engineering labs and a large lecture hall. Overall, we have over 55 programs of study. You can see those listed here, but um, I'll send some more information out within the next couple of weeks. You can also see our top programs of study on the left-hand corner, but just know that we also offer pre-professional and professional health programs, several graduate programs, and even seminary school. We're excited about our undergraduate students. 98% of them are um, who are job-seeking graduates are employed within one year of graduation. And over the past 15 years, our acceptance rates into medical school um, PA and PT programs, receiving a job right after college um, in nursing, education, business is at 100% and 83% for business and leadership internships. The reason for our student success is because of our small intentional class sizes. Our student to faculty ratio is 10 to 1 and our median class size is 15 um, average students. And not only are your professors teaching you a lifelong skill, but they're also there to mentor you throughout your four years and even become your lifelong friends after graduation. In addition to the skills that you'll receive, internships and education practicums are part of our curriculum. They provide an awesome opportunity for on-the-job learning and really boost your resume as you start looking into the job force. In terms of our nursing clinicals, we have so many clinical placements all throughout hospital and patient care settings in Harrisonburg and even in Charlottesville. Linked to this is our Washington Community Scholar Center where we offer DC group living with other EMU students, offer top notch internships, and you can take classes at several DC institutions. A part of this is our cross-cultural program where it's built into the curriculum. We offer a semester abroad, a summer trip, or even a semester or summer in the Washington DC internship program that I briefly mentioned. If you wanted to study abroad, we have gone to over 80 different locations all across the world throughout the past 30 years. Um, you can see some of our popular locations on the screen in front of you and just know there are many more added every single year. If you wanna build relationships and create memories, this is a really awesome opportunity to get involved in campus events, such as weekly events like Tuesday Night Trivia and an international food festival. We also have regular access for our students to join or to be a part of the fitness center, join an intramural and um, hang out on our climbing wall. We have over 30 clubs and organizations on campus and clubs and organizations are being added every year from students who are first year students looking to um, create and jumpstart a new club. A student service and program that I'd like to mention is our Academic Success Center. It not only offers free peer tutoring to you, but you can also be a tutor in an academic field in your junior and senior year. 
a lot of our students will work together and create the world a better place. How we do this, we are a Christian university affiliated with the Mennonite Church USA, grounded in biblical discipleship, community, service, and peace. One of the recipients of the Nobel Peace Prize is an EMU alumni from 2011, and she is a great example of creating unifying leaders. You can tell that there's not just one EMU student from one place. We come from all over the world, all over the country, and we have more than 50 denominations on campus. If you're interested in playing a collegiate sport, you can see that we have 19 athletic sports teams. We participate in the NCAA Division Three ODAC Conference, and you can visit um, campus to get connected with a coach. Every EMU student also gets into campus for free, and you can see that this is really part of the fan experience. So one of the main important parts is financial aid. 99% of our students receive financial assistance, and an average assistance package is over $37,000. This past year, over $17 million was awarded in aid by EMU through grants, need-based aid, academic scholarships, even departmental scholarships within engineering, STEM, visual and communication arts, education, and more. We also offer several work-study and non-work-study programs. I definitely encourage you to visit and apply to EMU. All we need after you submit your application is your high school transcript. After that, you'll be reviewed for admission and you can also join us in the fall of 2022. Thank you. Great, thanks so much. Uh, next up is the University of Pittsburgh. Hello everyone, good evening. My name is Asa Ansham. I'm an enrollment services manager for the University of Pittsburgh. I'm based in Maryland, about 20 minutes from the capital. Uh, I know we are short on time, so I will try to be as thorough as possible. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, the University of Pittsburgh is a major research university located in Western Pennsylvania. And as an institution, we truly do value collaboration, innovation, and inclusion. Uh, as you can see here on this slide, we are an urban campus. And as a result, our students very much enjoy navigating our campus, whether it's on foot or with public transportation. Uh, I believe one of the best attributes of our campus is in fact our location. Uh, we are located roughly three miles from downtown Pittsburgh. And downtown Pittsburgh is really is a key industry leader in so many different sectors, everything ranging from healthcare, manufacturing, technology, education, and business. And as a result, our students are very much able to secure competitive employment opportunities that can really help enhance their undergraduate experience. And that can take form in so many different ways, whether it's internships, co-ops, research studies, clinical sessions. Uh, we try to provide our students as, ma as many opportunities as possible in which they can have those key social and professional experiences that can really kind of help them find their path. Uh, the city of Pittsburgh, and for most of our students uh, in the DMV, is about a four-hour commute, but I will say the city of Pittsburgh is a city in which you get all four seasons. Uh, if you enjoy the changing of the seasons and the attraction that comes with that, I think you would very much enjoy the energy and the buzz around campus. As shown on this slide, we have the Cathedral Learning, which is actually the second tallest university building in the Western Hemisphere. I'm not sure if I have any uh, Harry Potter fans among our Gen Z, but I will say the cathedral actually kind of resembles a real life Hogwarts, which is pretty neat. Uh, but moving along, uh, you know, Pitt education really is a combination of the liberal arts and the pre-professional education. Uh, we have over 100 different majors, minors, and certificates, and our students are very encouraged to really explore different areas of areas of interest and subject matters. Uh, in total, we have over 19,000 undergraduates, undergraduate students, but I always like making the note in the fact that we have over 1,300 students from the DMV. So rest assured, you wouldn't be alone. Uh, as an institution, 40, over 40% 40 of our students are out-of-state residents. So uh, we understand that it is an acclimation process to get familiar to not only your campus, but the city as well. And we provide those resources to really make Pitt your home away from home. But uh, as a prospective student, please know we have five entry level schools uh, and each school has its own relative class profile and will vary when it comes to requirements and prerequisites. Uh, for example, the Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences is our largest undergraduate school and offers the most diverse major selection. Uh, in general, we enroll less than 3000 students annually in, into the Dietrich School, but in comparison, the School of Nursing, uh, which is one of our more competitive 
energy level school, uh, we only admit less than 200 students annually. So my best advice for students, especially this time of the year, you guys are so early when it comes to the admissions process is, you know, take some time to just kind of do your research, figure out what you may be potentially interested in. If you're undecided, you know, rest assured that's totally okay. We have those resources to kind of help you find and navigate what you may be interested in. But as a potential freshman, sophomore, and junior, I would just encourage you to you know, conduct some due diligence, conduct some research and see what different programs are offering because the admission process is truly about fit and finding the right place for you. And the last thing I would like to kind of discuss a little further is our admissions process. There are a few takeaways I would like to share. Uh, first of which is that we are test optional. Uh, PIT will be test optional for our, for our upcoming two admission terms. So for my current juniors and sophomores, we will be test optional. Uh, we practice rolling admissions, which means we do not have an early decision deadline to apply for general undergraduate admissions. Uh, instead, we inform our students on a first come first serve basis once we have received all of their required application materials. And um, in addition to that, we practice a holistic review uh, policy, which means essentially that there isn't a specific type of grade or test score that will automatically generate a specific type of admission decision. Uh, we have a committee, so just please know there's a numerous set of eyes that will have the opportunity to review your file. So essentially my best advice uh, during the application process is the information that you share with us should really highlight your academic potential and performance as a student and as an individual. Uh, our admissions committee is very interested in knowing your interests, passions, and ways in which you feel you can contribute to the mission on campus. So you, there's numerous ways to kind of share your story and we're very much looking forward to learning more about you. So please note, uh, if you are interested in learning more about the university, I would like to highlight that our, oops, looks like I skipped a slide. Our visitor engagement team is very active. We have daily and weekly information sessions that are available. That's a great way for you to learn a little bit more about the student life balance, academics, as well as financial aid and scholarship opportunities. But once again, I just want to thank everyone for attending tonight's program. Great, thank you so much. Uh, next up is Marymount Manhattan College. Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Tez. Uh, I also go by Tez Wea. Um, I am an admissions counselor at Marymount Manhattan, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. Um, we are located on the Upper East Side of New York City. That top marker that you see there, that is where our academic campus is located. The other two markers are our, are our residence halls. The one in the middle is our 55th Street, as our first year residence hall, and the one at the bottom is our upperclassmen. We definitely like to say um, the city is our campus, just because we're so involved with the city that we are in. We have about 1,900 undergraduates total, which is great. We have that 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So in terms of finding some type of prospects after Marymount Manhattan, whether it's career or you want to go to, grad go to graduate school, um, it's very beneficial to you in terms of the professor getting a chance to know who you are and exactly what path that you want to be on. We have about 31 majors and 45 minors for you to choose from. And then, of course, we are not just a New York City school. We do have students coming from all over. I also recruit in the DMV area in Pennsylvania, and we have students coming from basically the entirety of the United States. So we're not just uh, New York City Central. So our career services, one thing I really like to highlight about this is that we have something called the City Edge program. Like I said, the, the, we like to say the city is our campus. The City Edge program gets you out of the classroom and into the practicality of things. So you're not just in the classroom learning learning the theory behind business, for instance, writing a proposal. Instead, we're actually placing you in a company in New York City so you can build your network, build your skill, and just be out in the world and not just stuck in a classroom. So this is what we really like to emphasize. And in terms of a fine and performing arts, um, we bring in professionals to adjudicate your work. This is an forever changing industry. So we definitely like to keep all of our students up to date on what's happening in the world. Of course, we also um, provide the mock interviews and the resume and cover letter building along with many other uh, benefits. So this is just a quick uh, glimpse of everything that we do offer. I am happy to say we recently added a BFA in film and media and a BFA in creative writing. As of now, there are no prerequisites to apply to those programs. So I highly encourage you if you are interested to definitely apply. Um, and what I also like to highlight about this, it's very, very easy for our students to add multiple majors onto their degree. Um, we really want you to explore what it is you are interested in. So. Um, we have something called double dipping. You can take one class and it can satisfy two 
it could satisfy a requirement for two separate majors. So this is why if you ever speak to a Marymount Manhattan student, you're going to hear them say, I'm studying this, this, and I minor in this. We encourage you to explore everything that we offer to figure out exactly what it is you are interested in. We have at least 35 clubs and organizations for you to take a part of. Uh, this is also ever growing. Um, we have something called Apple Fest, which is held in the fall, and Strawberry Fest, which is held in the spring. Uh, what that is, we usually shut down the street that Marymount Manhattan is located on, and it's basically a big block party, a big festival. And this is a good chance for all of our organization organizations to set up a table and for you to get integrated into the community and see what it is you are uh, interested in. So definitely take a gander at everything that we offer and just look on our website as well. So our average admission uh, numbers, we those are listed on the slide. We do not necessarily have a minimum, so I highly encourage you to apply. We try to look at everything else on your application in terms of your essay, recommendation letter, how active you are, although we understand this, this is COVID. Um, we try to just get to know you as a person and not just a number. So as of now, uh, we are going to need your application. We are on Common App. We are going to need at least one recommendation letter from you and your essay and a $60 non-refundable fee. As of now, I am not sure if we are test optional for fall 22, but definitely um, send us an email, keep in contact, and we will definitely help you out. The average cost to attend, if you do decide to live on campus with us, is going to be about $56,000. However, if you have a family or friend in New York City, or you just want to get your own apartment, as many other of our students do, then you will be paying the commuter sticker price of $37,000. Whenever you apply, you are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships. There is nothing else that you have to apply for. If you are interested in the fine and performing arts, then you can also qualify for our talent-based scholarships. Uh, you can be qualified for both. All of our Marymount Manhattan um, sorry, scholarships are renewable for all four years. Just keep your grades in good standing, you know, show us that you're trying um, and you will continue, continue to receive your scholarships. Um, and I highly encourage all of my students out there to see what scholarships are, are out there. They literally throw money at you, whether you're left-handed, you're an only child, <laughs> they will give you scholarships and we will accept everything you receive without any um, detriment to any grants that we have given you. And of course, definitely stay connected. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We are on TikTok. We recently went viral, which is great. <laughs> um, and then that is our um, email address on the slide and my personal at the bottom. So definitely reach out to us. I'm always happy to hear from my students and I look forward to reading your application in the future. Great, thank you so much. Uh, up next is Capital Technology University. You're muted. Sorry about that. Uh, my name is Benjamin Michaels. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions here at Capital Technology University. So let's just hop right in and talk a little bit about Capital. So as you can see on the screen, Capital is the only private university in the state of Maryland that is dedicated to uh, STEM uh, study. So engineering, cybersecurity, computer science, and tech management. Where is Capital located? We are located right here in Laurel, Maryland, uh, nice and snug in between Washington, DC and Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, and I do wanna mention that we are right across the street from our NASA Goddard Center, uh, as well as right down the street from the NSA, two of our largest employers of our graduates uh, from Capital. Now, this, uh, these photos right here are all of the push pins that Either all of our graduates are either working or have had internships or uh, are just partners with capital. So there's, a, a, as you can see, a bunch in DC and a bunch in Baltimore, whether they are uh, private uh, organizations, government organizations, contractors, not for profit, uh, though all those types of organizations are all uh, in this map and have you have the opportunity to be a part of. This is a list of our uh, all of our majors. Um, I do want to point out a few of them. We have astronautical engineering. So if you're interested in literal rocket science, uh, we also have uh, cybersecurity, which is actually ranked number one in the nation for our cybersecurity program. And we also have mechatronics and robotics engineering. So if you're interested in robotics, uh, excuse me, and drones, 
uh, as well as uh, we also have an R2D2 that works on campus. So if you're really interested in that, um, come on campus. We do offer campus visits. Um, but we do have, have all of these majors and they all work really well with each other. So if you want to major in cybersecurity as well as computer science, you can do that. And almost everything can be said with every major here. Um, cost to attend. We are $26,000 a year just for tuition, but if you uh, want to live on campus, it's an additional six to $8,000. $8, so on average, it's about $34,000. Uh, and that is just a flat fee, whether you are in, living in the state of Maryland or if you are out of state. So if you are in Virginia, then your tuition will be about $26,000. Uh, <clears throat> and with that being said, when you apply, you are automatically reviewed for merit scholarship. And right now, uh, SAT and ACT requirements have been waived for fall 2021. I don't know what fall 2022 looks like, uh, but if you are interested, uh, contact me and I will let you know as soon as I know. Um, but you, we offer up to $12,000 in merit scholarship. If you have been a part of a robotics team or a cyber security, uh, cyber patriot uh, program, you are offered $5,000 a year in scholarship. And I also want to mention this scholarship down here, the Capital Scholars Program, uh, where if you have a GPA of 3.5 and above, uh, you are automatically thrown into this. And it is basically an opportunity for you to present, get, have us get to know you, as well as the faculty get to know you, and you have the opportunity to receive a full tuition scholarship. Um, we do offer housing. There we go. So this. Our housing on campus is apartment style. Uh, we do not have a dining hall on campus. We do have a uh, cafe where if you don't wanna cook one night and you just wanna go and grab a quick burger, you can. Um, but this gives an opportunity for our students to have a, uh, ind uh, an independent lifestyle. So you're able to go shopping, go cook on your own, set off the fire alarm once or twice, cooking quesadillas, who knows. Um, but the, that is an option. Um, and I do also wanna mention that these are some of our internship opportunities. So you have the opportunity to work the, with the DOD, NASA, the Navy, as I said, the NSA earlier. Um, all of these organizations look at capital specifically to get uh, to recruit for internships and full-time positions. They do also sometimes have uh, government clearances as well. And so I do want to mention the capital commitment, where if you, we guarantee that you will get a job within 90 days of graduation. Now, if that doesn't happen, if you do not receive a job within 90 days, we guarantee that we will provide 36 additional undergraduate credits for free so that you can build that resume and experience for when you go off into the workforce. This here is my information, so feel free to contact me. This phone number, you can call me, text me, just as long as it's not in the middle of the night. Um, as well as we do have uh, campus visits and information sessions, so feel free to use the uh, QR codes or feel free to contact me at my email or the admissions at captechu.edu, and we will be able to give you that information. Uh, that is all I have for you guys today, and I'll leave it to our facilitator. Great, thanks so much. Uh, next up is West Virginia University. Hi everybody, I'm Mandy Weaver and I'm a regional recruiter at West Virginia University. I'm going to share with you um, first a little bit of a background about WVU and then get more into the um, academic information and application process. So West Virginia University, we're the flagship institution for our state. We're a public land grant founded in 1867 and we're located in Morgantown, West Virginia. We have just under 27,000 total students who come from every state in the United States and the district and over 100 different countries. Um, even though we're a state public school, our 
student uh, ratio for in-state and out-of-state is about half and half. We're a little bit higher in our out-of-state population. Um, and even though we are a larger school, we have smaller classes for students with an 18 to 1 student to teacher ratio. Our 2019 freshman class profile, as you can see, is listed there. So these are our averages and we do have uh, minimum requirements for students and then some of our academic departments do have additional criteria um, and things that they are looking for but uh, for general admission this was our average we offer over five well <laughs> over 500 now i need to update my my uh, slide here but over 500 student clubs and organizations uh, for you to participate in everything from clubs and orgs that are maybe um, recreational in focus to um, those that are maybe um, associated directly with your academic program. So there's a little bit of everything you can do outside of the classroom. We have 18 Division I sports. We participate in the uh, Big 12 Conference. And then outside of our Division I sports, we have a ton of club sports that are very active and even uh, compete against other uh, D2 and D3 schools. And then we also have a lot of intramural sports um, that you can take advantage of. We offer an honors college to eligible students, and this offers a little bit more of a challenging environment while you're at WVU, if that's something you're interested in. And um, if you're interested in study abroad, we do work with over 50 different countries and, um, you know, have had a lot of success with students who have wanted to, to study abroad. So we're definitely excited to hopefully get that up and running again sometime in the future. Freshmen are required to live on campus. We do have 12 different residence halls you can choose from and different room types. So we have suites, we have a, an apartment complex for freshmen, we have tra traditional room style, and then we have uh, residence halls where the bathrooms are a pod style. And uh, you are able to select your own room and roommate. We're a research level one classified university and we're also a space grant research university. We offer free tutoring to all of our students and we have learning centers all around campus for you to be easily be able to access that if you need it. Our Career Services Center is available to every student and alumni um, at WVU, in addition to all of our academic departments have their own career counselors to help you with internships and then, of course, eventually job placement. And then finally, for your families, we offer a Mountaineer Parents Club to keep your families connected to the university while you're a student there. And they do different activities and fun things throughout the year. All right, so let me go on here. All right, so where is Morgantown, West Virginia? Well, we are about 70 miles south of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, about four hours away from DC. We're in the northern part of our state and Morgantown really is a college town setting. Um, everything's sort of um, built around the university, but we do have other uh, organizations and businesses there, but the university is really the heart of the community. And those are some of our um, accolades that we've received over the past few years. Um, just so wanted to share that with you so you know that it really is a nice community that you're in. Um, Morgantown is our main campus and then we have branch campuses throughout the state, one at Kaiser, one in Beckley, and then the two blue areas of Charleston and Martinsburg are additional health sciences centers. We also have a health sciences center at the Morgantown campus. So at the Morgantown campus, this is how our campus is laid out. We have three areas throughout the town that make up the entire campus. The downtown area is where you would find most of your freshman classes. It's our arts and sciences area. The Evansdale side of campus is kind of really more major specific. So if you're interested in engineering or creative arts, um, agriculture, natural resources and design, uh, anything in those areas, you would have classes primarily on this side of the campus, but there are, are lots of other uh, things over here that you may access. The Student Recreation Center, that's the big building right in the middle of the picture on the Evansdale part there. Um, that's open to all students. We have our student health and wellness on this side of the campus and most of our housing uh, for students is located on this side as well. But we do offer housing on the downtown side. And then our health sciences center, this is a an area where we have our comprehensive health sciences program in addition to the WVU hospital right on site. So students in any of our health sciences programs um, who need to use the hospital for their rotations or clinicals uh, can do so very easily.
Our students get around the three different parts of campus by using the buses. Uh, our public transportation is the green bus in the downtown picture. That's free to students. And then of course our WVU buses as well. And then the PRT is our transit system. So just quickly go through the rest of the information here. These are all the different academic programs we offer. Everything from engineering to interior architecture we have at WVU. We have a rolling admissions process. Um, we do expect to be test optional for fall 2022. And then a little bit about our scholarships, two different ranges for test optional students and then for our score senders. Uh, if you want to do any future student uh, resources, check out the website here. We've got virtual tours. We're doing in-person guided tours now, uh, self-guided tours always. And then coming up on April 24th, we have a junior open house. You can register and check that out. And that's my contact information. Thank you so much for listening to me and have a wonderful rest of your night. Excellent. Thank you. And next up is Radford University. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here. My name is Whitney Pitchkey, and I'm one of the regional assistant directors for Radford University. So I recruit the um, Hampton Roads area, which is where I am based out of, um, but I'm happy to talk with anybody uh, here tonight with any questions about Radford. So um, with that, we'll go ahead and jump right into the general information. Radford is a mid-sized comprehensive university located right in the heart of Radford, Virginia. Um, so the little star over the map of Virginia there will let you know exactly where we are. We are right in between the Appalachian Mountains and the Blue Ridge Mountains in the heart of the New River Valley. So it's a beautiful part of campus, um, or sorry, beautiful part of the state and a very beautiful campus for sure. Our total enrollment is right around 12,000 students total. Um, when you look at just the undergraduate population, that goes to about 9,000 students. So it's a nice mid-sized campus. We have all the kind of perks of being at a large research university in terms of academic offerings, research opportunities, uh, but we also have all the things that you would also want in a small liberal arts college in terms of our liberal arts curriculum, as well as the uh, kind of close-knit community and small class sizes as well. Our male-female breakdown is pretty much on par with the national average and about 36% of our students are first-generation college students, so the first in their families to go to college. And we are very proud of what our students are able to do when they come to Radford's campus. They do some really amazing things. So to go into the academics a little bit more, um, this is where Radford really does start to feel like a small college because your average class size is typically about 23 students. Um, you are working directly with professors. So less than 3% of classes are taught by graduate assistants or teaching assistants. So this is where you really do start to feel like it's a small, a small campus and a small university. Um, the really amazing thing about the academic world here is that regardless of what you study, whether it is philosophy or physics or nursing or theater or dance, you are going to have a really fantastic hands-on experiential learning opportunity. We really want to make sure that whatever it is that you plan to do after you graduate, we want to make sure that you have experienced what you will see in that real world job experience. We wanna make sure that you've already seen it and experienced it at Radford. So all of our programs, regardless again of what it is that you study are going to have a very strong hands-on experiential learning component. So this is a, a very uh, kind of brief list of all of our majors, minors, as well as everything that you can pursue a teacher licensure in. Um, feel free to check out more information on our website. Um, all of our programs are listed where you can see what's required for entry into the program, what the program entails, what students do once they graduate. You can definitely get way more information on our website. So moving into campus life, we obviously want you to come to college and learn and grow and flourish, but you do that both in the classroom as well as outside of the classroom as well. And so we give you plenty of opportunities to get involved and find the things that you really enjoy and love. And um, we give you a couple, couple of different ways that you, again, can, can figure out how, how to best navigate the um, college uh, campus life process. So we are um, Division I Collegiate Athletics. Uh, we are in the Big South Conference. Uh, we also have a strong club and intramural program as well. Uh, we have over 300 clubs and organizations, everything from student um, government to student religious organizations to Greek life, um, volunteer and service organizations, you name it. There is a way for you to get involved. And if there is something that you want to pursue that you don't uh, see on the list of activities at Radford, you can easily uh, start it. 
one of our colleagues actually is a, a recent alumnus of Radford and he started uh, one of our clubs and organizations that um, has grown to be a, a very popular program and he's very proud of the fact that he can look back and say that he started that when he was um, when he was a student at Radford so we're very proud of that. Uh, the residential community is a very strong community. We have 15 residence halls on campus that are all either suite or ensuite style. So you would share a bathroom with no, no more than just you and your roommates. So you have a little bit more of an independent living um, situation, independent living environment. We also have a strong living learning community, uh, which does include the ability for you to live with other students who are pursuing similar programs as you. So for example, our living learning community that is centered around the arts, our community of artists, um, this is where students can live together um, and collaborate with each other and sometimes start to um, think about things and see things that they might not have seen otherwise in their classes. So where um, our music students are working you know, in the classroom with other music students in the residence hall, they might be uh, living and working with students who are dance majors. And so our music students and dance majors um, can collaborate in the residential community so um, that's one example of some of the living learning communities that we offer, um, but we really do give you lots of opportunities to continue the work that you're doing in your classroom environment and the residential community as well. And just on that uh, blue banner there, these are just a handful of resources that we offer. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but overall uh, the community at Radford is one where we really want to make sure that you are getting everything that you need to grow and to flourish and to be successful. And so this is um, basically to provide you opportunities and resources both uh, for personal growth and personal development as well as academic development as well. So we definitely have a very, very strong sense of community, a very strong uh, family um, environment and we wanna see all of our students succeed. So now I'll talk a little bit about um, the financial aspect of it. Um, we really do pride ourselves on being an affordable institution um, in the state of Virginia. So our total cost of attendance for a Virginia resident is right around $22,000 for the year. Um, we do, of course, uh, give you plenty of opportunity for additional aid through financial aid, um, the FAFSA need-based financial aid, as well as our Highlander Distinction Program. There is no um, separate application in order to qualify for our merit scholarships. You just have to apply to Radford and we will automatically review your application for scholarships. Speaking of applying, um, you can apply online through the common application or the Radford specific application. Um, we do not have a preference, so you can send us whatever you would prefer. Um, we do, uh, of course, require the high school transcript. Um, we are currently test optional. Um, stay tuned for what fall 2022 will bring, um, but we do uh, plan to you know, do whatever it is that will paint you in the best light possible when reading your application. Transfer application, very similar, but we just need college transcripts instead of high school transcripts. And finally, please do connect with us, come visit us. Um, we are um, hosting in-person um, visits and tours. They are smaller than normal because of COVID restrictions, um, but especially for those of you who are juniors and looking to start your uh, college uh, search process, um, this summer we do plan to have um, tours available uh, both in the summer and the fall. So please do come and connect with us and visit us. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back over to our facilitator. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you all so much for your presentations. Uh, we now have a few minutes for Q&A. So I'll ask all of our presenters to come back on camera and respond to this question. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And I'll ask that you all respond in the same order that you presented. All right. So what advice would you give someone going through the um, college search process? The advice that I often give all of my students is apply for as many outside scholarships as you can. Um, I can, I literally cannot stress this enough. I was a first generation student. Nobody told me this. I did not apply for anything. And I definitely feel like I could have been receiving some sort of scholarships through a community, through my high school. So that would be the best piece of advice I would give you, apply for as many scholarships as you can. If nobody applies for the scholarship they're offering, then nobody gets the money if you're the only one who applies or um, it's a competitive one, you have a pretty good shot of receiving it. So that's, a, that's the advice that I always give. Yeah, I mean, I would say overall, 
Uh, the one encouraging, encouraging advice I always try to share with students is the fact that the admissions process is a journey and it's your personal journey. So don't fall in the trap of comparing yourself to another student in a different situation. It's really about finding that perfect match and that perfect fit for you. So just understand there's numerous of universities across the country, all of them have great resources and programs to offer. So it's just really up to you to kind of raise your hand and being, being direct to the right channel and so that you can find that next, next home for you. I also want to emphasize my predecessors and what they said, definitely see what's out there um, and also um, see what kind of college you're looking for. Are you looking for something big? Are you looking for something small? Do you want sports? You know, see if uh, the college you're interested in has everything that you want in terms of uh, extracurricular organizations and of course what it is you want to study. Um, so that's something to definitely keep in mind. Uh, I mean, again, to reemphasize everything that everyone else said, but um, honestly, on your application, be yourself. Um, that's one of the biggest things that I can offer because I love, I personally, I love reading what you guys love to write about. Um, it just makes it so much more of a personal connection and you never know, the, the person reading it might have the same uh, interest as you. Uh, so yeah, just be yourself. Yeah, I definitely agree with what uh, my colleagues have shared so far. And, um, and I also think too, along with, um, you know, what Taz was saying about, think about what what you want, you know, what type of school you want. Yeah, definitely do that. And uh, be honest with yourself, you know, if you, and, and, and visit different types of schools. So think that, you know, you may think that you want to go to a big school, but so visit some big schools, but then also visit some of those smaller schools, visit some schools a little bit farther away, visit some schools a little closer to you. Uh, because you may think you want one thing, but then when you actually get out there and start checking them out, it, you, it could be completely different than how you first felt. And just what I, what I said, be honest with yourself, just, you know, um, really, uh, take into consideration what you want and what makes you comfortable. You know, like like the other colleagues were saying, don't compare yourself to to other students and what they're going through. This is your journey and and your process. So so just do a lot of research and explore. The hard part about going last is I have to come up with something new, <laughs> and everything that my colleagues have said has been spot on. So yes, I'll echo everything that they have said. Um, the other thing that I would just say too um, is just take advantage of whatever whatever the schools that you're looking at, whatever they offer in terms of ways for you to learn more. Take advantage of those. It's a little harder in COVID times, just because you know sometimes your um, schools are limited in what they can do um, and how many people they can have on campus for various programs. But if the schools that you're looking at are offering um, an interview with a current a current um, college student, take advantage of that because it's um, a way for you to learn more. Um, if they offer, you know, again, with COVID, it's hard to do this, but if they offer an overnight program, take advantage of that. So just anything that you can um, take advantage of for the schools that you're seriously considering, take advantage of it because that's a really great way for you to start to see, is this a place where I can be for four years? And is this a place where I can be happy and grow for four years? Awesome, thank you all so much. Uh, we are just about out of time for this session. So I wanna say thank you for joining us and a big thank you to all of our presenters. Uh, and when you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We do appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. So please be sure to sign up for more. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as other sessions at strivescan.com slash Virginia. So thank you all and enjoy the rest of your evening.